Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. Today we take a look at the arcade scene once again and at a game that was never ported to any home console but was probably one game my friends and I spent the most money on besides Sega's AM2 Daytona, Sega Super GT. During the 1990s in the arcades, Sega was well known for their 3D arcade racers and boy were they awesome with their speed and easy to use controls. Virtual Racer was the first to introduce gaming on a whole different level with their Model 1 board but wasn't able to get that bang that kept me coming back. It wasn't until the release of the Model 2 board and Daytona in 1994 where I kept coming back for its visuals, the speed, crashes and 8 player multiplayer competitions. This was as good as it gets as my friends and I kept coming back mastering the art of drifting to finally beat the hardest track. Knowing AM2 was responsible, we knew that their games were that of quality and searched high and wide for the next racer, but this time it wasn't for Daytona 2. It had race cars from famous brands like Dodge, Ferrari, Porsche, and McLaren. These were the real deal fantasy cars people wanted to drive, let alone race at the time. Sega Super GT was developed by Sega AM2 and released by Sega in 1996. Using the Model 3 board, the game came off the heels of Daytona, but the team wanted to change the driving system up a bit by using supercars instead and a new drift system that would change racing strategies. We quickly hunted a golf line that would have the game in their arcade that was just about one hour away to drive. Dedicated. We all made the trip each weekend for a while just to get our hands on the game. Once we played the game, we were hooked, just like Daytona, but much better. Getting better and better, friends would stick to their desired cars and drift like there was no tomorrow. If you didn't master the drift mechanics in this one, the game would be not as forgiving as Daytona. The drift mechanic is needed to progress or even come close to succeeding in the game. I still retained a lot of what Daytona was in handling but drift was a necessity and not a gimmick. This turned a lot of Daytona fans away even though expert players would also drift in Daytona. The only difference was the drifting in high accelerated areas was a must. The scarcity of the game to be found in arcades didn't help with its popularity or just getting it into the hands of gamers. With Sega's Model 3 board being much more expensive than the Model 2 board, most arcade owners didn't want to take the chance and with Daytona still making so much more money. Even to this day, it wasn't a risk to just keep that game over another more expensive, unproven title. The high price would lead for less games like Virtual Fighter 3 to enter the mainstream arcades until Sega developed the Naomi board that was more powerful and more cost efficient for the arcades to take a chance. The game was to be ported onto Sega's Dreamcast console as part of their lineup and was given a tech demo of the game running but like the ill-fated Dreamcast, the game was never meant to be and never released. The game is now available via emulation and can be found on the internet with variable success. I do have hope for Sega to release their 3D arcade games collection one day is something that I feel may come soon with their early arcade emulated titles on the Astro City Mini Arcade Cabinet that Sega did release in Japan last year. 
Overall, Sega Super GT became that racer that produced fantastic visuals for the time and still gives me goosebumps with their imaginative tracks and speed was unmatched. Whenever I see a Sega GT arcade cabinet, I jump at the chance to revisit my Dodge Viper and Beginner Night Track as my all-time favorite. That's it for me on this episode on a look back at my favorite arcade racer, Sega Super GT. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Behold out and Greg, take us out of here, and I will see you all next upload.